floss tube. This is Stephanie, the SoCal Stitcher, and this is my very first floss tube video. I'm really excited to be joining the floss tube community and hope I can contribute um, by showing my whips and haul and um, just kind of general thoughts on cross stitching. Uh, before we begin, I wanted to kind of give you a, a brief introduction of myself. Um, my channel is uh, SoCal Stitcher um, because I reside in Southern California. I was born and raised in California, uh, Pasadena to be specific, and um, I have been cross-stitching for about 45 years, um, which is really hard to believe. That is a long time. Probably some of you weren't even born when I started cross-stitching. Um, makes me feel super old. Um, but anyways, I, I learned um, how to cross-stitch from my grandmother. Uh, I used to um, go up to Portland, Oregon for my summer vacations and my grandmother was an avid seamstress. She was a, she did china painting, she made quilts, she um, did, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, cro knitting, crocheting, um, and she was just super talented. Uh, she even had crocheted like her piano bench seat, uh, not crocheted, sorry, needlepoint. She needlepointed the uh, the piano bench and the dining room chairs. Um, so she was just amazing. Um, during World War II, she made um, my grandfather's suits um, out of newspaper. Um, newspaper. She cut the patterns on a newspaper. So she's very resourceful and and just super talented. But um, back to my cross stitch experience. Um, she purchased at like a five and dime um, some plain pillowcases and an iron on cross stitch pattern that you know it was um, it was basically um, you know stamp cross stitch. So I did his and her pillowcases for my parents and after I completed the um, the pillowcases which unbelievable I actually completed them during my vacation uh, she um, crocheted with um, with thread uh, around the edge and it was just awesome I mean those really made the made the pillowcases. And I think my mom still has them somewhere. I asked her if she's going to look, but um, those were many years ago. Um, and then I kind of had a, well, a kit here and there. I really never um, finished anything, I would say. Um, I kind of started it, and it kind of got put in a drawer somewhere. Uh, it wasn't really until I was pregnant with my daughter, so I was about 20, 21, um, and I wanted to do a birth sampler for her. So I would stitch in the evening and... Um, and that's, you know, really kind of where I got back into cross stitching. Um, I did complete the burst sampler. I, I don't have it to show you, but I did complete it. And um, and that was, you know, kind of my my first coming back to the cro to cross stitch. At that point, it was in the early 80s. Um, I had a friend that also was into uh, got into cross stitching. So we used to go to um, there was like a fabric store in the mall that used to sell patterns. Um, I, I do remember um, an LNS uh, in Pasadena, to be exact, that had really cool charts. She had a, all the Paula Vaughn. I remember when new Paula Vaughn came out, I, I'd go get it. Um, and she had um, more Ada that I can remember. Now, she might have had more, you know, different, um, you know, linen, but I wasn't into linen. I was really intimidated. So the um, only thing I remember was just different color Ada. Um, so I stitched a couple of patterns. I, you know, stitched something on a sweatshirt for my daughter, you know, just those kind of things. Um, I did collect the Paula Vaughn charts. Um, and like I said earlier, I really was intimidated just because they were stitched on linen and not, and not on, I really didn't want to stitch it on Ada. Um, and I guess a few years after that, I, I did attempt on even weave, um, to start a Paula Vaughn. And that was my first attempt on any kind of any any kind of fabric other than Ada, um, and I still have that whip. And I'll, I'll show you when when I do a whip parade. I'll show you um, I'll show you that uh, it, it is not finished. And I don't I don't know why. I think maybe because um, maybe it should be. I feel it should be done on a 32 count. Maybe I'd be more happier with it um, than on the 28 count even weave. So. Um, that's kind of where I started with cross stitch and then I left it again when my daughter was, you know, going to school. There was a lot of school activities and um, just family life and I really didn't stitch. Uh, I 
um, it wasn't until I moved to San Diego and I was looking for a hobby to occupy my time when I wasn't working, uh, also a way to maybe meet new people um, since I was new to the area. So I found a cross-stitch store in Escondido, um, California called Stitcher's Treasures. Um, and Vicki, the owner there, um, she really changed my life with cross stitch. Uh, it was thanks to her that she introduced me into um, like Joblin and other kinds of linen and I picked out a, pa um, a pattern to work on and I did the lavender and lace Celtic Christmas. Um, and I did complete that um, and it was my first attempt with doing anything with beading and I um, I gave it away as a gift. I had it framed and I gave it away as a gift and I believe it was 28 count. It was a really really pretty like light like real pale green and I have a picture that I'll um, I'll have to get and I'll maybe when I do my um, my finishes I'll I'll uh, insert it in there um, and that was just you know I really got into that um, we used to have a stitching night at the at the shop on Thursday night so just seeing what I, I know in floss tube I've heard other people say just seeing what everybody else is working on kind of like when you go to a retreat and then you're like oh I've got to have that I need it um, and a lot of the women were doing um, Mirabilia's um, and then Chatelaine's. So I did start, you know, um, I started a couple Chatelaine's and I have those in my whips as well. And those are just so beautiful. Um, I know Yanni, hi Johnny. Um, she has like amazing, you know, Chatelaine's and Mirabilia's. I mean, all over her walls. I mean, I, it, I'm really jealous. Um, her stitching is, is great. And, um, anyway, so that I, I kind of, uh, hope to pick up or it's kind of pushing me by seeing some people on floss tube working on their Chatelaine's, uh, cozy eggs doing, um, the King's garden. And, um, I have that exact, um, exact whip and I kind of, eh, got, it wasn't, it wasn't exciting me. So I put it away and I haven't worked on it in, you know, a couple of years, but I do have it. So, you know, it's kind of encouraging me to get that out and, and start stitching on it. I think one of the reasons for doing floss tube for me too, is that I wanted to, um, I wanted to kind of encourage myself to finish things or show you th my progress that will make me feel like I'm actually progressing. Um, I have, as you'll see here in a, a few moments, I have a lot of big projects that, that seems to be what I, um, what I really lean towards. Um, I'm trying to do um, smaller ones or something that's quicker that I can at least feel like I have a finish. Um, in fact, um, Priscilla and Chelsea, hi there. Um, I saw um, Priscilla's um, ABC by um, Little House Needlework, the autumn, I think it's the fall ABCs. I ordered that from 123 Stitch and I think I'm supposed to be getting it today or tomorrow like probably tomorrow um, and I want to just I, I kind of want to just do that it's a fall piece and I thought it looks kind of quick um, so we'll see um, okay so some other some other things here the style of cross stitch that I like so I, I said earlier big most of my stuff's big pieces I have a couple of chatelaines that that I've got going um, I also like um, I like long dog samplers, uh, and I'll show you a couple of whips here that I have. Um, and, you know, anything like Quaker, um, spot samplers, uh, Veerland samplers, I really am attracted to that. I love, love, love people that have, you know, black and white wall, you know, of black and white samplers, like, you know, death by cross stitch all in black and white or, um, or red and white, like Moulin Rouge sampler. Um, I just, I think those are really cool. Now wall space, that's a whole nother, whole other thing of where to have wall space. Um, but that is, um, that's something that I really, um, you know, what I really kind of love. I love to look at and, and I, I love the aesthetics of it. Um, fabric, um, I tend to use, I used to use 32 count mostly, um, and that, that's true to a certain point. A lot of my whips, like I have, um, I have a house is a hawk run hollow as a whip and, um, I will show you that on my next video and I'm using, doing that on 32 count. But what happens is when you finish a work, when you buy the linen, 
it's a larger piece and it's more costly to frame. So what I'm trying to gradually get into is using a smaller count. Um, and also plying your threads a lot easier when you're using one thread versus two. So um, the piece I'm going to show you in a minute here is on 36 count, uh, but probably going forward I'm really going to try 40 count. Um, and the reason why is I think the cover coverage is more like um, like 32. Um, I had some help here recently, just be when I started this project, um, from um, Heidi Cran, one over two cross stitch. Um, she just started um, floss tube. I think she's got two or three videos. Check her out. She's awesome. And I'll I'll um, link these people down below too um, after I'm done recording. Um, I'm kind of new at recording, so I will get used to being able to insert names. I will try if I can, but I'm if not, I'll have them both down below. Um, but she, she as well as Abby Bella Stitch and even Nicole uh, and Nicole's Needlework, I asked them questions about it because I was really concerned about the coverage on this one piece. Um, and I'll, I'll show you the piece right now. Um, I am doing this sampler here. It's the Perman, Perman Cell Sampler, Cellet Sampler 1826. I've had this chart for about 10 years and I had it kitted up with a brown fabric, brown linen by, um, I think by Zweigart or Wichelt, probably Wichelt. And I had really some cool silk I was gonna use with it, but I, my style kind of changed and I'm like, why, I don't really like this. So I went online, which is a bad thing, um, and I saw what other stitchers had done, had posted their finish on, or their, or their whip on Instagram and on the internet. And I decided to stay true to the true to the colors um, that this chart was um, was was uh, was called for in the chart. And you know it's funny because for the longest time I thought this was black, and if you can see real close, there's some red there. Uh, when I open up the chart, you know, duh, should I open up the chart to begin with, right? Um, it was 939 uh, DMC, which is a navy, and then 3685, I believe, is the red. So um, I started. Uh, I started with that, um, with those colors, and then I ordered this cream colored linen. So I'm going to show you what I've got. I have it on a Q-snap. I plan to stitch on this today. Um, I, I didn't stitch at all last night, um, but uh, the night before I had um, completed the border going across. And then this is the A, and then this is a T. And the reason, usually I go across when I'm stitching this, but I wanted to get down to one of the medallions to see if I like the coverage. Now, you know, it's hard to see on here. Um, I, I've tried this two ways. I initially started it one over two, and I didn't like it. Then I started it two over two, and I hated it. So I ripped it out and I started it again, one over two. And it's okay, it's not my favorite, but I already have the linen and I don't really want to start it over for a third time. So I think I'm just going to go with the 36 count and um, and and see, see how it goes. Um, in the future, you know, if I was going to do this again, I would do 40 count probably. So just kind of a note to myself that I'm, I'm not... I'm not really a 36 count person. Now maybe if it was stitched with um, silk, like um, Abby, Abby Bella Stitch is doing the same pattern and she's doing it uh, with uh, um, HDF um, silk and hers looks amazing. So, you know, maybe the coverage is different, you know, just by using silk versus DMC. And also we all know that darker colors DMC sometimes, you know, they don't, they don't have the, as great a coverage. Um, and um, just kind of interjecting here, like, what do I, do I use a stand? Um, I do have, you know, or do I stitch in hand? Uh, I, I tried actually in that border on, on that sampler I just showed, I did try and stitch it in hand and I did a little bit of it and I, it wasn't bad. Um, I had to use different glasses. As you can see, I'm wearing glasses for this video. I don't need glasses for far away, but if I'm to see what I'm showing you and everything, I need, I need my glasses. So that's what they're kind of my computer reading glasses, stitching glasses. Uh, and then I have another pow more powerful, um, if I'm going to stitch in hand because I can't stitch in hand with these. So it sucks. And that's what happens when you, when you get older that you just have to adapt. 
Um, the stand that I'm using now, um, I was I was told about or learned about through Stitcherisa, Danielle. Hi, Danielle, how are you? I actually started watching Floss Tube because of her videos. So she was one of the first ones that I watched. And um, I started messaging her and we got to talking and she, on one of her videos, she showed the stand. Um, and so I quickly went online on eBay and it just happened. I mean, it was, I don't even know how I found it. It, I just found the stand and I, I was like, is this it? I kept going back to her floss tube and looking and I think this is the stand. So I went ahead and I bought it. It wasn't cheap, um, but it is awesome because it has a stand, um, for the, you know, to, for the pattern. Um, it has a light, a magnifier, magnifying light. Um, and it's made of wood, so it doesn't, aesthetically, it looks, you know, kind of cool in your living room. So it's right behind me over here. I don't know if you can barely see it over there. Um, and that's kind of where I st stitch if I'm going to stitch in the living room. I'm actually recording from my dining room, and that's my living room behind me. Um, the other place, other stand I have, and the other place I like to stitch, um, is I have a System 4. Um, I have the floor stand, but I also have the lap stand and I will put the lap stand in, in, on my bed and I'll put pillows behind my back and I have a lamp magnifying thing and, uh, like an ot light type thing and I can stitch in there as well. So it just depends on, you know, where I'm comfortable stitching. Uh, recently I bought, um, the Omnic, um, factory, uh, scroll, scroll rods and I have those. I can't say I have used them yet um, because it requires a different type of stand. It requires, I believe, a Lowry. I do have a Lowry, but I don't have a place to be like, like have multi stands. I'm in a very kind of small space, so I really haven't used them yet, um, but hope to, you know, soon. And I guess the next thing I just wanted to show you um, that kind of takes care of most of my questions that are little questions I had put out about myself. Oh, one thing I would say because Jesse Marie um, at Jesse Marie Does Stuff is a huge Virginia Tech fan um, and she talks about football and everything. I am a huge USC Trojan and fight on. Um, my uh, dad went to film school there. My sister-in-law went to film school there. Um, so, you know, just kind of a family thing and um, follow the football team. Uh, my Yorkie, uh, Vegas, and I'm, it's hard because it's backwards here what I'm saying. He's actually laying on a USC blanket back there, but I think he's sleeping. So, oh, actually he's on the chair. All right. <laughs> he's not supposed to be up there, but um, so, okay. So getting back to this, um, as I digress there, um, I have, I'm going to show you one of my oldest whips. Um, and this is the, um, I don't have the picture of it because I only have the pattern. Um, but I, if maybe the next one, I'll, I'll post it if you guys don't, haven't already seen this, but this is Glendon Place, um, Pretty Pumpkins. And I don't know if you guys have seen, I know it's kind of wrinkly and let me crook it here. Um, I, I'm doing this on 32 count. And I think it's it is a Zweigart fabric. Um, it's kind of a pumpkiny. It looks a lot lighter um, on the on the screen than it is. Um, and um, this this project I've had been doing since about two thousand, I guess seven. Um, and well, I guess I maybe two thousand eight. Um, and one of the reasons I think I put this away was because I started stitching on this or I picked it up and took it to the hospital. My dad was really ill and it was a real like unexpected illness. And so I, I, this was my piece I brought to the hospital and I don't know, maybe it just has kind of bad memories for me, but I never really think to pick this up. So, um, because it's fall, I, hopefully I can, all I have is one more pumpkin and some of the bottom, um, the leaves. So I think I'm going to pick this up and, and try and get this as a finish, um, here in the next month, which would be great. Um, and that's a 32 count linen. Um, I really love the colors of it and it's, it's a fun stitch. Um, like I said, but it's just something that I haven't been as dedicated to, to completing. Um, 
I've also recently been going through my stash, my whips, and trying to organize stuff. Um, I don't know how you guys, how what happens to you, but I found things that got buried somewhere or just, you know, put away and not with everything else. Um, and so that I think was kind of one of them um, that I had um, stuck in another section and I, I just recently pulled that out. So hopefully it'll get some, it'll get some work. Um, another one of my um, whips that I have is Long Dog Samplers Bagatelle. Bagatelle, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, and it's kind of a cool pattern. It's not just cross stitch there. Um, if you're not familiar with this pattern, right up here in this section there's um there are all oh actually it's up here sorry very at the top you you actually do a back stitch and you use i think i have it here you use gentle art slate which is a real pale blue gray it almost looks white um i'm doing this on with b5200 and this is my progress so far, which is not, I wouldn't say it's lights out or anything. Um, but this is what I've done so far. And this is a huge piece. Like, and this is what I mean when I talk about 32 count, okay? I mean, when you go to frame something like this, you know, not only framing it, where do you put it? And unless you live in a house that has ginormous walls, you know, this is going to be hard, at least from in my environment here, to hang. Um... But anyways, I love it. So I'm, and I have not started the the back stitching. I need to. I was gonna finish that top piece first, um, and then um, and then get to where that unicorn is, and then start that that uh, back stitch. All right. So that's one of my other whips here. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think if I have oh. I really don't have any other whips that I was going to show you today. Um, I am working on a forest grew. Um, I know that Blitz Stitch, um, he's super close to finishing it. Um, I, I'm doing it on a light gray color. I think it's like platinum. Well, it's not platinum. It's just a light gray. And um, I'll bring that out on my next video and show you. Um, I kind of wanted to make this more of a, a quick video than, you know, sitting here and showing every one of my whips. Um, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about for a few minutes, um, oh, I guess there's a couple things. First of all, I don't know, I, I don't really haven't heard a lot of people talk about this. I know Vana uses, hi Vana at Twisted Stitcher, love her videos, love, love, everybody loves Vana. And congrats on the, on taking the grand champion. Um, I want to say something to Vana though. You have changed the way I stitch the, by using that pin stitch. That has absolutely is a miracle. Um, like doing that cell that that sampler that I showed you on thirty six with the navy. I mean that that would have so many little ends because you have so many the little alphabet and everything, and you just don't have the tails. And I really want to thank you. Um, I don't know why I never learned that. I I use the loop method, of course, when you're starting. A brand new thread but if you've got a thread that's you know halfway or you know whatever it 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 doesn't it, it doesn't get any better than that so if any of you are not familiar with the pin stitch please go check out Vana has a great 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 video on on explaining how to do it and if I can figure it out by watching the video I'm sure you guys can too so it was it's awesome what I was gonna say here though with these cones um I use black a lot. This is DMC. I know a lot of people like to use anchor black. Um, and I'm in the process of getting the white, like a white one as well. Um, and possibly red. So some of the colors that I frequently use, I'm, I'm going to invest in this. Now, where you get these is on Joann's. Um, and it's, if you have a 50% off coupon, this comes out to about $12. Um, and this is 450. Oh, I guess I should have looked it up. Anyways, here, maybe it says here on the, on the on inside, which I can't read. Um, hundred grams. Well, I don't know. It, it's, there's a lot in here. And if you go online, it'll tell you, but this, with the price of DMC going up, this is really great because if you have a piece that calls for a lot of black or you have something that calls for, you know, white, red, um, these are great. So, but you, they're only great with the coupon. Um, and you can only get them online and, and, you know, if you get one or two, you can 
I think you can get um, free shipping. Um, I also wanted to talk about, I got a, um, I'm going to kind of show you a little bit of haul. Um, I got this needle minder, actually came in the mail yesterday from Cassie's Needle Minders. I really love Piglet, okay? So I had eyed that for a while. There's a couple other ones that I want to get from her. Um, I, you know, they're just, they're so cute. Um, I'm not, I don't have a lot, lar large collection like, like Danielle at Stitcherista. Um, you know, a lot of people have a million needle minders. I don't have that many, but, um, you know, this one's super cute and she has an Etsy store. Um, if for any of you, I guess she also has a Facebook group. So I, I think a lot of people know Cassie's needle minders, but I just wanted to show you that. And it came really quick. Um, I guess she makes them all to order, which is, which is super nice too. Um, okay. So just keep stitching. That's another channel that's fairly new. I think they just did their 16th uh, video, Pam and Steph. Hey, Steph, Stephanie, Steph. I don't like to be called Steph too much, but um, whatever. I'll answer to whatever. Um, because of Pam, uh, now, just like Pam, um, I do genealogy. I've been doing genealogy for the last probably 20 some years. Um, I, I would say that's like my other, next to cross stitch, that's my other big time occupier and hobby. Um, and one of the things that I had never seen this pattern before, it's the mother's tree by lavender and lace. And it looks like this and what it does or what it is, it's a tree. And then underneath is the lineage from the female line. So my intention is, um, if, if I, we talk going bottom up is to start with my granddaughter and I'm going to leave a space for her if she has a daughter. And what they, what you can do, and I think they said in the chart, is you can take some floss um, and either, if you get it framed, either, you know, uh, tag it inside the frame when they frame it and the, and the inside of the glass, you know, or the other side of the glass, whatever, um, so that if somebody wants to, you know, stitch it or whatever, they could stitch another name on there. Um, but it's going to be my, my granddaughter, my daughter you know, myself, my mother, and, and go back to, I think I go back to the 1700s. So um, I think there's going to be nine names here. The only thing about this is that's kind of challenging is you have to, you have to um, figure out the, you have to figure out um, the stitch, you know, the, oh, what do you call it? The pattern here for these. So by, based on their names. So, um, I'm going to work on that here soon. I, I just ordered a piece of fabric for it, but I thought that was, it, that's going to be kind of a cool stitch. And Pam's making a lot. She actually got the, I think she got the tree done, which is probably half the battle there. Um, and then Vana had this, uh, that I've been eyeing for a while. It's a stocking by carriage house, uh, Kathy Barrick. It's the primitive stocking and hers looks so cute. I, I don't know if she did it in this color, um, color way, but I'm going to probably stay true to this. Maybe I'll change it out a little bit, but, um, I've loved this pattern and I, uh, so that's one of the ones I just recently received. Now, one of the things my, my granddaughter's name is Rose Lynn. It's Rose and then Lynn, but it's together. So capital R, capital L. And my daughter is, they're having a house built. And so the, each of the kids will have their own room and one of the, um, she's going to do her room like with roses and um, I don't know, she's got these doilies that have been crocheted and she's going to put them on hoops and, and all that. Um, and so we're looking for kind of a rose kind of themed, um, something I could stitch for her room. Now this is the rose alphabet by Vermilion and I am probably just going to do the letter or I might do her name. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to do this as the whole sampler, but it, I thought it was kind of cute. If any of you guys aren't familiar, this is an older chart. So I really, I really think some of these older charts, and it's kind of funny. I was talking about Paula Vaughn. Um, I didn't have that Paula Vaughn, the quilt of uh, the quilt seasoned quilt that uh, Jessie Marie um, got me to buy. Thanks, Jessie. Hi. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I, it, it's cool. You know that her her designs are awesome. So, but I think what's happening too in the stitching community is a lot more people are really getting getting into cross stitch or, um, have just gotten into it and they're finding charts that they didn't know, you know, maybe they were popular, you know, 20, 30 years ago. The only problem with that is if they were super popular then, then they're going to be pricey now. 
um, which is not a good thing, but um, all right. So I wanted to show you a couple things and give a shout out to another um, another designer that's on Etsy or another um, vendor. And that's this, um, it's, what is her, I, I, I'm always pronounced this wrong. I guess it's Zoo Design. You guys probably have seen her. I, I follow her on Instagram as well. And she's on, um, of course she has an Etsy site. Um, this is actually a dark hunter green. And I had bought some pumpkin colored linen, a 40 count from her. And then I, I've got to thinking, you know, I'm going to ask her if she ever dyes green, dark green, because I have loved this one pattern I'm going to show you for the longest time. It's a long dog. It's called Bristol Fashion. And one of the things I loved about it is that it was on green fabric. Now, the problem is, is it was on green Ada, I think. And you cannot find, I, at least I could not find any dark green linen. So I, I contacted her and she she had the, she said, I'll dye it. And she knew, looked up the pattern and the dimensions. And so I'm going to do it on 40 count. And I'm going to use um, beef um, 5200. And I really like this, these two. One of the things that kind of intrigues me about these patterns is that I love alphabets and the different the different um, styles of the alphabet. But then all these little medallions or little motifs here, these are almost feel like a mini completion when you're working on them. And you know, this one I've always liked. There's a little house there and a couple and animals and flowers and you know, just a, a really neat looking sampler. So um, maybe when I finish the, um, pretty pumpkins, I'll start this, but I'm going to finish something before I start this. So there, I just said it. Um, and then, like I said earlier, I think that's one of the great things about floss tube is maybe keeping you honest or keeping you on track. Um, if I, you know, I try and do somewhat of a rotation. Um, I used to be a one at a time stitcher. Um, but then like joining stitch mania, um, I did the 2015 year starts and then I got into trouble because now I have all of these whips that, you know, have a little bit of stitching and now they're just occupying space. Um, to me, it gets overwhelming, um, a little stressful. So I like to get them down a little bit, um, and a little bit more manageable. And then I have a lot of things that are kitted up. So, um, the last thing I wanted to share with you, I, I don't know how many of you guys are even interested in this, but. I really love French designers. Um, I love the French patterns. I think that they're unique. I think that they're some of them are sweet if you're if you're you know stitching them for um, gifts and um, they're hard to come by here. Uh, and I've you know found these, um, but I really love like this little design here. I mean it's so it's so cute. Um, these perfume bottles, um, you know this lady with the, with the hat boxes. I mean, I don't think this would be too famous last words, too hot, long of a stitch, <laughs> but it probably is, <laughs> but it looks cute. And it looks like it could be easy when there's these little butterflies that you could do and these little teacups and we could even do one. I mean, I just, they're awesome. Um, that's one of them. Then there's this one here that I got that I love this sewing machine. Um, even though I'm not a big, <laughs> not a big sewer. Um, like I said, my grandmother could sew. I wish I would have gotten that jean. Um, I am gonna try to make some project bags um, from um, following Vanna's uh, project envelope. I have purchased project bags. Uh, one of them was from Stitching and Sequins. Um, I I love her. I love her bag. I mean, I got this Italian one, and it it's uh, it's awesome. Hi, McKenna. I hope you're having a good time in Carlsbad. Um, but anyways, I love her stuff, but I thought I would try it and um, I will see how it goes. If it really is awful and sucks, then, you know, I'm out some fabric and who knows what I'll do with it. But anyways, but this is really cute. Look how you can take a teacup and then just do the top. I mean, how cute is that? So, um, so another one, this one I was looking at for a long time. Um, I don't know if you guys are um, familiar with in in Paris, and I've never been to Paris. Um, my brother is getting to go for a second time coming up. Um, his wife is an author. She writes um, she writes children's books, and she's like on her sixth book, and um, it's a whole series um, on uh, 
her name is Shannon Messenger, and I know I'm like nervous right now, so I can't remember the name of the book. Sorry, um, but if you if you look on Amazon, uh, Shannon Messenger, she has a whole series. It's kind of like a Harry Potter. Um, I know that in California they got the Scholastic Award, and they're going to be in the libraries, which is cool. Um, but anyways, getting back to this, um, in in Paris they have a place called Lardy. If I can show it to you right here, the uh, over here. Sorry, um, <laughs> they they make the the macaroons and all kinds of pastries in um, in France, and I just. I think these are so cute. So, um, anyway, so that's kind of my my recent haul, my recent stash stackquisition stashquisition. That's hard to say. I know Johnny, Johnny had problems with it, so I just call it haul. But I just want to thank you guys for for tuning into my channel. I hope you subscribe. Um, I'm sorry if I talk fast. I was nervous. I'll, I'll try and slow down if if you know. Just kind of bear with me. I know the lighting's a little harsh. Um, but I wanted to put this out there. I, this is like my third attempt at recording just because the phone would ring or the dog would bark. Um, so, and there he is, Vegas, Mr. Vegas, my Yorkie. Um, he is up on the blanket over here in his favorite spot. So, um, anyways, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to try and post this right now and thank you for watching and, um, I'll be back, uh, hopefully in a week or two and I will have more whips to show and hopefully more progress on, um, on my, um, the whips that I showed you today. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Keep stitching. Bye.